Hello and welcome to MB Tech. My name is Matthew Bingham and today we're going to be going over the upgrade of Proxbox, which is my virtualization environment that I use. Um, I run a lot of different VMs in here. I also run uh, VMs with containers, with uh, Portainer on top of that. Um, but basically this is just going to be going over upgrading the current version that I have on my Proxmox up to 7.1 that just got released like a couple days ago. Um, so first of all, let's uh, look at the release information. And that is at this link here. I will be posting this in. Basically, it was released actually November 17th, so two days ago. Um, it has some updates to the uh, Linux kernel as well as the QMU LX, uh, C4 um, and ZFS 2.1. Uh, so the biggest thing for Proxmox is to back up all of your important information. And again, this is for lab environment. Um, it's not that you can't run this in production, but this is for a lab environment. So if you're afraid to lose anything, then definitely back up everything. I can't stress that enough. Uh, it is very important that you back up uh, all of your important VMs uh, on here. So we're going to log into Proxmox. This is my current Proxmox setup. I'm running 7.0-9. Uh, from there, what I want to first do is actually look at the... Uh, systems that I want to back up and okay the one that we want to back up at least one that is most important for myself is my domain controller uh, all of the other ones I'm not that concerned about at this time um, so I'm backing that one up uh, it is the uh, domain controller so I hit backup backup now I'm going to actually just, uh, back it up to the uh, local and click backup and it should start going through the uh, backup of that system uh, to the uh, backup location and I'll fast forward through this since it will take a little bit of time okay the backup is completed I feel pretty good about the uh, system and you know I've got this backed up this is the most important one this is my DNS server um, all that other stuff everything else I can reproduce okay now that we've backed up the uh, Proxmox VMs that I'm concerned about uh, we're going to go in and we're actually going to edit the uh, sources list so we'll do a nano app sources list and we just want to make sure that this one line here is uh, added to the uh, uh, sources so that it would actually be the bullseye PVE no subscription. So if we uh, go into our PVE, we can see that I do have that line. This is the upgrade path. Download Proxmox Debian bullseye PVE no subscription. So we have the updates that we need available or the uh, source available to do the updates. Um, so we can close out of there. Um, Next, uh, what we're going to do is we can either do this two different ways. We can either do it from the terminal, an apt update, apt disk upgrade, or we can actually do it from a the web GUI. You can also do it from the web GUI as well, and I'll show you how you can do that. You'll go to your uh, Proxmox uh, graphic user interface. Uh, underneath here, you'll notice that uh, you'll select your PVE, and then here there will actually be a updates. And if you go to the updates, you can see here that there are updates available. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, the current version, the new version, stuff like that. From here, you would actually go to the uh, upgrade, and it would go through the upgrade from the graphic user interface. We're actually going to do it from the command line. So we'll go back here, and then what we're going to do here, from there, we're going to run the apt update and apt distribute upgrade. And it's going to upgrade 159 and newly install 16. So we'll say yes. Okay, looks like the updates have completed on this. Uh, next is, uh, I've heard different things, but normally what I do is I go in and I shut down all of the VMs and then I reboot the system. It, I think it just allows it to go a lot faster. Uh, after the reboot, so we'll go back to the GUI. We will see what we have for our uh, servers. And I believe we can do a bulk stop. And we're going to stop all of the VMs that I have running on here. So let's stop. Okay, all the VMs have been stopped. Uh, it took about 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, I think there was about 30-something uh, VMs that were running, so not too, too bad. Uh, now we're going to go back into the cons uh, console, and uh, I mean the SSH connection. And from the SSH connection, we're just going to send a reboot command. Okay, 
Okay, we're getting ping replies from the server now, uh, so it should be back up. Uh, we can also check real quick the uh, uptime uh, Kuma, and we can see that we should be getting back up online here in just a minute. We can see that we are now uh, reconnected to the uh, graphic user interface, and then what it's doing is it's actually starting up the uh, VMs that I had set up that I wanted to have it have start. Uh, we are now up to 7.1-5. Um, so the upgrade looks like it has gone through properly. Uh, we can also look at uh, number of virtual machines. We got 13 running currently. Um, all of our other stuff looks good that way. We can actually go back to the uh, updates just to see. And there's no updates available. So everything looks like it's good. Uh, it's up and running. VMs are starting up. Uh, we can see that all of our servers seem to be getting back up online. Like I said, the biggest one that we are concerned about is the DCT, which might not have been set to start. So here it is, MB2. We can look at the options. Start on boot? No. So we can change this because we really do want it to start on boot next time. And we're going to start that VM. And we can go to the console as well and see where we're at. Okay, so the system should be back up. Okay, it looks like our Proxmox has been updated. Um, we're now running the uh, latest version of that. And uh, we are connecting to the storage, so everything seems to be fine. I'm not seeing any issues right off the bat. Uh, we did start up the DNS server or the uh, domain controller for uh, binglab.com. Uh, LAN. So that, is, seems to be, that seems to be working properly and everything seems to be uh, in line. Next we're going to be upgrading the True NAS device which uh, provides the storage for Proxmox. Uh, so that will be our next step. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this.